NASA, it turns out, has a tremendous number of open APIs for us to explore. What's an API? Well, we could define it and say an uh, uh, application programming interface, but that, that doesn't help us really. Let's just say that a very popular way to use APIs is typically with HTTP. Why? Well, HTTP is a protocol the whole world speaks. So we'll use HTTP as the mechanism to move us across a LAN or a WAN interface. So suddenly the network we're not concerned with. When we arrive at said API, assuming API speaks HTTP, which most do, not all, it's not written in stone, doesn't have to, uh, but once we reach said API, if it speaks HTTP, if our, and HTTPS is implied, if our data is structured in such a way that the API understands it, we can access resources on its side that it has exposed to us. Um, in this case, the resource we're going to go after is we're looking for what is the URL for NASA's picture of the day. What is that, that current URL? And then let's open that resource inside of Firefox. So you might be thinking, all right, Zach, I'm not really interested in grabbing NASA's picture of the day, as cool as that might be. I am more interested in, say, network automation. I have some Cisco API I have to interact with, right? Guys, the principles are always the same. It's access the API, present your, your data that you, you uh, want to, to give to the API for it to, on its back end, go and do some calculation for you or search through some database for some information and push that back to you. You know, typically we think of this whole API back and forth as like a you present some data, you get your data back, and we're kind of done. It's not a constant communication channel. Now, but enough of the sort of theory behind this stuff. Let's look at the code, which is already written for us. I'm just going to break down. I'm opening this code in LeafPad. If you're going, I don't know what a LeafPad is, it's just Notepad. It's a place where we can write our script. If I look at the first line, this is called a shebang line. You've probably seen cryptic lines like this. They always begin at the top of the file. Uh, they teach Linux. I'm currently in an Ubuntu 1604 world here. Uh, so they teach my Ubuntu world that, hey, when this the user tries to execute this, throw it over to Python. And you might think, well, doesn't .py, didn't we save this script as .py? We did, but file extensions don't mean anything to Linux. That's a Windows world thing. So it's just best practice as to find a shebang line at the top. Next, we're importing a few lines. We import URL lib request, we import JSON, and we import web browser. These are all standard libraries. When you install Python, these come along with the installation of Python. But when you write your scripts, these aren't included. If I had to make a, what's a good analogy here? Let's go with the general contractor analogy. It works pretty well. Suppose you call the general contractor. That general contractor shows up. They have, uh, say, hammer and nails with them, some plumbing tools, uh, stuff to do basic jobs that you know they, they might be able to attack on a typical house call. Um, however, when you call, you say, hey, actually what I need you to do is uh, do some work on my chimney, right? The chimney, the masonry's falling apart on the outside. So the general contractor says, you know what? That's not out of the realm of kind of the norm, but typically I don't put the 36-foot extension ladder on my truck. That's just too heavy and too bulky. I'm normally not going up three and a half stories to work on something. But the homeowner told me, you know, this is, uh, I, I need this, not specialty tool, but a tool that's a little out of the norm to use. 
So we would say that that contractor imported the extension ladder, the extra long extension ladder. Why didn't he take it along on every trip? Well, because it's not typically used on every trip. It's only used uh, in rare occasions. It's not so rare that it's not a, a tool the contractor doesn't have in their garage, but it's rare enough that it doesn't make sense to put on the top of the truck and take it to every job. Maybe a ladder, but not the extra long ladder. The barn ladder stays at home. So that's what this stuff does. It gives us access to code that normally we wouldn't have access to because it just would add bulk and inefficiency to our program. Moving on. This is a comment. That's why it begins with some hashtags. And uh, we're just sort of saying what this couple lines of code is going to do. The first thing we do is define our where this API actually exists. And you can go over to NASA, look at their dev section. They have a whole bunch of open APIs that you can explore. They're really fun for teaching you stuff like how APIs work, like getting started. Uh, so this one is actually where the um, picture of the day, I think it's astronomical picture of the day is actually located. And the question mark allows us then to provide input after it. Where we should actually apply for a developer API key and include that after the question mark. Do you see this thing here, demo key in all caps? This will work, but there's a limitation on it. I think it only works like five times from your IP address per day. So what? Oh, Basically, NASA is saying, if you want to begin exploring this API stuff just to get started, you can pass API key equals demo key, but not many times. We don't want the whole world abusing that privilege, so we shut that off. We'll track the IP address you're coming from. If you do it more than X number of times a day, it stops working. The solution is super straightforward, though. On the same website, the NASA developers page, you apply for developer API key. How cool, right? And within a few seconds, they go, here's your API key. They mail it to you. And neat, now you're an official Python API developer. Very cool. And you just replace demo key with the key you're assigned. So go over there, play around on the website. It's super easy to figure out. That's what's going on there. We're going to use demo key. We then call the web service. So we say, all right, that URL we define plus my key, that's, we're gonna concatenate those two values. So imagine this with that tacked onto the end of it. That whole thing we're gonna open. So what this does is um, actually URL lib request URL open, um, effectively creates like a file type object for us to interact with. All the data that's being served up there, we now can use it locally within our Python system. Uh, and that's going, we can reference it as a pod URL OBJ. Super straightforward name, right? Well, now that we have that, we can apply a method like read which means take that whole thing, that file-like object, and read it. Create a string, a single string, from all the data it contained. That's a pod read at this point. And then we're going to say this thing. We start at the inside and work our way out. We say, okay, well, a pod read, which is now this string, um, we want to decode it using UTF-8. And by the way, it's in JSON, so can you please convert it to a Pythonic data structure we can actually read and interact with in our Python program? And we'll call that decode apod. So at this point, decode apod is a Pythonic data structure. It's just a bunch of lists and a bunch of uh, key pairs, dictionaries, right? That's super easy for us to look through. What might be useful is to display what the heck we currently have, right? So that's what this will do. Just print decode a pod so we know what the heck we're looking at. 
and then we're going to we're going to actually print to the screen enter uh, press enter to open NASA's picture of the day in Firefox and we say from the web browser library go ahead and open from the data from the data structure we have decode a pod look for the key URL and we want to go to the value so that will make a little more sense when we open this uh, and see this run I'm gonna close this for now when I said open it, I mean when we actually run this code. I'm going to run this code here. So Python 3 NASA 01 Pi. All right, here we go. Converted Python data. This is what was originally JSON. We've now converted into this easy to search through Python structure. There is a, this is how we begin a dictionary in Python. There is a key called media type whose value is image. There's a key called URL whose value is that URL. And that's actually what we said right at the end of our code. It was pretty straightforward. We said, hey, um, from this thing we saved as, I believe, result, I think it was, uh, we're looking for URL, the value of URL, which will be this thing right here. So when we go and work with like JSON, when you go work with APIs, one of the things we always do is either look at a dev page to see what is, how is the data organized, or you just print it out to the screen right like this and figure it out for yourself. This one's pretty simple. Oh, okay, I see a, this must be an image that I'm, I'm learning about in the URL. It's available right here we could go on and you can figure out the rest of it, right? Maybe you wanted the high def URL, or maybe you wanted uh, the title, or maybe you wanted the explanation, right? Again, a key whose value is this. Maybe you wanted the date, you want to do something with that, right? So just a super basic example. We're not done yet. Remember, this script is supposed to pop it open in, in Firefox, so let's go ahead and hit enter. Patience, there it is. How cool is that? There's our super fancy picture of the day. Thanks, NASA. Lots for you to try if you're following along and trying to teach yourself something. Go sign up for NASA Devel De Developers Key. Uh, write this script out. Keep running it until you burn out of demo tries, right? And then plug in your API key and get that to work. Maybe get something with the title to print to the screen. Maybe get something with the date. You know, go above and beyond this video. Learn how to save this image and archive it. And just start teaching yourself. There's all sorts of directions you could take this script. Another possibility would be go over to alta3.com and sign up for a training class. Or better yet, go, hey boss, I found this cool video. Here's a guy that seems pretty enthusiastic, maybe comes from a pretty cool organization that really wants to teach us Python. I think we'd have a fun week uh, working with this organization. So I hope, to, I hope you do take me up on that. Hop over to alta3.com, and I hope to see you and possibly your entire organization soon in an Alta 3 training class.